Hello there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Andrew Semaganda and today I want to explain to you how you can develop plans for your Microsoft Access databases. It is always recommended that you first put down your ideas together in the order to develop a successful Microsoft Access database. As you can see here, I was developing a plan for a fixed asset register. And here I was developing a plan for the inventory system. So it is highly recommended that you put down your plans by using a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil. As you can see, this fixed asset register, what are objects? Objects are the different elements that will make up your tables. As you can see in the fixed asset register, you expect these following objects. As you're trying to plan, of course, you find a lot of crossings. That is fine, that is expected. In order for me to explain this better, let me take you to the final plan of a fixed asset register. And these plans are called schemas. So this is the final schema of a fixed asset register. Unless you get this schema right, it is going to be very, very difficult to develop a robust and a a well-functioning Microsoft Access database. So as you can see on this schema, we have different objects, what I talked about, the different objects that make up your table. What I mean by objects in terms of schemas are these fixed assets, employee, location, status, asset category depreciation, verification, maintenance, depreciation rate. So you need to first put this down clearly and then come up with this kind of schema. So within the fixed asset system, you'll find that the main object will be the fixed asset itself. The fixed asset is the main object. Then the other objects, the employees, will connect to the fixed assets. The location will connect to the fixed asset. The asset category will connect to the fixed asset. The depreciation rate will connect to the fixed assets. Depreciation will connect to the fixed asset. Verification will connect to the fixed asset. Maintenance will connect to fixed asset and status to fixed assets. The way you can tell that this is the main object, in most cases, it will have very many columns, all fields. You can see all these are fields. So by the end of the day, as I'll be explaining to you, and I'll take you on a journey on how to develop a fixed asset register or a fixed asset application, you'll be able to come up with a fixed asset system that looks like this one. So let me close here. And I open a fixed asset system or register that I'll be taking you through so that you learn or you get to know how to develop the same system. I will start my fixed assets, the one which is based on the schema I've just explained the fixed asset schema. It will show you a welcome message and then takes you to the main form. So this is the system I'll be explaining to you and you'll be able to develop exactly this same fixed asset system. When I click on open fixed assets, the following information will show up. You can see the asset ID, asset description, employee ID, asset category, 
status ID, and so on and so forth. You even be able to depreciate these assets. You'll be able to know the maintenance information about this asset. You'll be able to verify, to do asset verification. I know in a company, in order to confirm the existence of assets, you have to do what we call asset verification. For example, this was a motor uh, cycle purchased on this date. I want to show you how this system works, how it depreciates your motor uh, cycle with ease. You even be able to carry out depreciation. As you can see, this motorcycle is being depreciated over a period of five years, which is 20%. So you'll be able to run depreciation by clicking on depreciate. So it is depreciating this asset over a period of five years, which is equivalent to 60 months. So when I place on depreciate, this asset will be depreciated over a period of 60 months. So you can see the cost is here. The total depreciation 30 million is also indicated here. You can see it has depreciated this fixed asset over a period of 60 months. And when you work out this, it is 30 million times 20% and divide by 12 months, you get 500,000 per month. So you can see this is depreciation for 31st of August, 2024. And this 8-2024 means August 2024. This is a control mechanism you use to upload information in your main system. So you can see, you can depreciate, you can check on maintenance. You can capture the date when it was maintained. Select say 15th of January. You can say maybe add some maintenance description, maybe they replaced plugs. And then maintenance performed by, say, you can see John. Maintenance cost, maybe you can say 200. By keeping such information, you'll be able to know whether this asset is becoming more expensive to maintain and maybe it is time to dispose it off. You can even go ahead to check on a verification. You can capture the verification date when the asset was last verified. I mean, verification means checking its existence. So you click here and say verification took place on the second or on the 10th and the comments. You can say motorcycle I mean you put comments if you have uh, you for disposal it's just an example so the next maintenance information will be captured here like that so at the end of the day, if I close this window, you can even close here. So at the end of the day, you'll be able to get several reports regarding, say, depreciation. If I open reports here, I can select the depreciation for this motorcycle by coming here. For example, if I wanted depreciation for January, just select here. And I can generate the depreciation schedule by clicking on that. Just, just click this query. Schedule is 
is here. As you can see, this is the depreciation schedule. Which schedule you can even copy and put in Excel and then upload into your main system. Of course, you can add the GL numbers as I'll be showing you in the subsequent videos. You can even generate this report in form of report format. So if I want a depreciation for this motorcycle, I just click here and say open report. So close and you can see this is our motorcycle here. I'd also captured the motor vehicle. This is a summary, but you remember the motorcycle depreciation was 500,000 shillings. So I can close here. I'll be showing you how to come up with all these windows and to be able to generate reports. I can as well generate a report showing me the fixed asset schedule. It will show the cost, the accumulated depreciation, and net book value. Assuming you wanted to know the value of these fixed assets of the entire company as at a certain date. Let's take uh, 31st of December 2020. Just select the date and click on open report. So you can see it has generated for me a report of fixed assets summary. This remember this is our motorcycle. As you can see it reads motorcycle, asset category motorcycles, location maybe Uganda, Purchase price, you remember it was 30 million. You remember the total depreciation, the cumulative or accumulated depreciation for the 12 month is equivalent to 6 million. That is 500,000 times 12. And this gives you a net book value of 24 million, which is 30 minus 6. It implies that the net book value of your motorcycle is 24 million Uganda shillings. I had captured also a motor vehicle, netbook value is 400 million. So you can see this is how you can come up with this fixed asset system. With all these navigation buttons, you can close here. I'll show you how to develop this main form to enable you navigate through your database. As you can see, this main form has open fixed assets, open fixed assets, it will open that, add employees, it will open that, add new depreciation rate, assuming you have a new depreciation uh, rate you want to capture for a new fixed asset category. You click there, then close here. Add a new location, click there, close. Add new status. If you want to capture information on whether an asset is in use or not in use. So you see here we have not in use and in use. You can see. So you close. You open reports, you close. I'll be showing you how to add all these buttons in my subsequent videos. So I will encourage you to stay tuned in in my channel such that you are able to follow through and be able to come up with such a fixed asset application. So I'm going to close this and then I want to exit this database by just clicking exit. When I exit, it will close the entire database. Okay. So as a, a recap, I talked about the fixed asset schema and how you can start planning for your fixed asset database. So it's the same principle. I also developed a schema 
for inventory management. Again, you can see it has uh, objects, which are products, suppliers, customers, employees, purchases, sales, orders. And here you can quickly tell the main object here is the product. All of these other objects will connect to the product because it is the product that you're selling. In the previous example, the main object was the fixed asset itself. But here, the main object is product. So that's why the product has so many fields. The best way to know that this is the main object, it is always having so many fields. So based on this schema, I'll be showing you how to develop this inventory management system. You can see it has a welcome message. You can see it has a main menu. When I click on receive stock, it opens this window. When I click on edit received stock, it opens this window. When I click make sale, it opens that window. Edit sale, it opens that window. Here, these are reports, several reports. You'll be able to get uh, information on items in stock, items sold in a period, purchases in a period, reorder levels. You'll be able to get a report on reorder levels. You'll be able to add a new customer. You'll be able to edit customers. You'll be able to add new suppliers. You'll be able to edit suppliers. You'll be able to add new items. You'll be able to edit items. Again, for ease of developing this database, you need to first come up with a schema. And a schema is automatically generated by Microsoft Access if you make the tables right. So how do I get to this schema? You just click on database tools and I click on relationships. So this is called a schema for the inventory management system. So I can close this schema here. You can as well develop schemas using Microsoft Word or using Microsoft Excel instead of using a paper and pen, but a paper and a pen is highly recommended. In my next video, I'm going to show you how you can import and export information from Excel to Access, even from Microsoft Word to Access, or from other databases to Microsoft Access. Thank you very much for listening to me. Please share, like, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you once again.